Yeah. Um, w- one of the topics that uh, we uh, you kind of st- start out the book with is uh, this uh, problem of evil and uh, and Bible mm-hmm. contradictions as well. Um, do you find it odd that uh, skeptics like Ehrman and uh, kind of tend to focus on this subject? It, it, it seems like um, such a such a far reach. Or you know, are we still are are, are people still banking on this uh, kind of uh, according to them kind of antiquated idea of uh, you know, there, there's evil in the world, but we just kind of call it whatever we don't mm. like. It seems like a, a, yeah. a weird thing for him to focus on for him being, uh, kind of, uh, um, so scholarly in, in, in yeah. his other yeah. subjects. Yeah. You know, it was kind of interesting, uh, even deciding which chapters to include in the book and which topics to address and even in which order, uh, and, uh, in the end, that was not our initial plan, but in the end, we decided to front it with the problem of evil and then why does God allow suffering? Because uh, even though it's a little more advanced topic and it's it's really more complex than some of the other issues we're dealing with, uh, it seemed like that was really the foundational issue, at least for him. And in my experience also for quite a few other people that I've, you know, I've, so uh, I would sometimes be asked to speak on this topic at university uh, campuses. And I usually ask, my host, you know, so I uh, can't talk about probably everything in the book, you know, what do you want me to talk about? And, and I would say the vast majority of times they want me to talk about the problem of suffering. Is that right? Wow. Uh, and, you know, I, d- d- to your question, I, I do find it odd, you know, I don't want to get off track by talking too much of about Bart Ehrman, but his field of expertise is text criticism. Right. That's what his first book was on. Uh, you know, the Orthodox uh, corruption of scripture. He studied with the uh, renowned text critic, Bruce Metzger at, at Princeton. Uh, and in, 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 and yet in many of his writings, he makes it sound like his main problem is related to the text of the Bible. You know, the, the text of the Bible is corrupt. There's, there's contradictions, which is more a field of, of harmonization or even biblical theology. Uh, but then it's very clear in, in his book on suffering that his real problem is with God allowing human suffering. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so it, it, it almost makes some of his other work like Jesus interrupted and so forth, uh, disingenuous looking because, you know, there he talks about things that by his own admission are not even really the reason why ultimately he rejects uh, the God of the Bible uh, as an agnostic. Uh, And, you know, as far as I know, he has little uh, formal expertise in, in that area, because that's a matter of, you know, theology, a matter of philosophy. Mm-hmm. And as far as I know, he's a rank amateur in those fields. I mean, he's even honestly a rank amateur in biblical theology when he, so when he talks about, um, you know, alleged contradictions in scripture, he's really out of his depth as far as I'm concerned as a trained uh, text critic. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I do feel like it'd be wise for him to, um, to read up honestly on, on some of those fields at the very least, when you look at his footnotes, they're often very sparse. And I, I remember looking at the Jesus interrupted book, very few footnotes. And I think almost half of them are to his own work, mm-hmm. right? Wow. <laughs> which shows you how kind of self-referential he is and, and feels that I know something about, you know, he would not even show any awareness of the existence of some key works. Like in this case, Richard Bauckham's Jesus and the eyewitnesses, right. You know, he yeah. doesn't refer to that book a single time in Jesus interrupted when obviously you know, that's a key contribution in the field. So that's not very scholarly. Yeah, it, it, it does seem like uh, him replying to specific claims rather than kind of the general uh, knowledge claims of, of, oh, well, we know John wrote John. Well, you know, can, can you can you talk about that? Can you talk about uh, Papias and, and, and the like? Uh, it, it seems sparse there. And to your point, I think, uh, going th- uh, through your book and seeing how many times he, he does play this this kind of theologian of like, okay, so God, uh, we know that the Bible's not written, uh, you know, by God's inspiration because, uh, it, you know, th- there's these 400,000 changes or whatever number we're up to. But it mm-hmm. seems like then you have to assume something about a God that you don't believe in, that you don't think that the that even 
um, uh, that, that we've misconstrued, that we've, 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 uh, we've had a false sense of who Jesus is or what he's saying or, or what could possibly be said. And it seems like you're, you're going around along as John and you're writing, uh, you know, in the beginning and, and you, you mess up the word beginning and it's almost, God has to take your hand and erase it and say, no, 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 that's not what I said. Come on, come, come <laughs> yeah. with me. <laughs> Yeah, you know, and again, I mean, those of us, right, who who are have tried to witness to, uh, you know, unbeliever, I mean, part of what you try to find out is what the real issue is, you know, that they're they're struggling with, and uh, and then let's talk about that, <laughs> uh, not about some, you know, smokescreen that even if I gave you an answer, uh, it's still not going to ultimately change your mind, right. and I think in his case, you know, I feel like in those debates, he's, he's debating Dan Wallace, for example, on, on text critical issues, you know, uh, uh, when all the while his real problem is over here. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I think sometimes it can be frustrating because I think people don't realize in those debates, there's actually debate rules. And so they're imposed on you. You can't just talk about certain things because you're not supposed to. Right. Uh, and so if the debate is supposed to be a text criticism, you got to stick to text criticism, yeah. which is one reason why I would usually not agree to those kinds of debates because I need to be free <laughs> like a laser to focus in on what, what I think the key issue is. Yeah. yeah. I, I think back to uh, uh, one of my favorite debates uh, with him is the one with James White and I'm part, par partial to James White. So that, that helps too. Um, where, yeah. where uh, the, the main topic is what, what uh, in any of the new Testament documents, do you see a, a change that would result in a change of theology or, 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 or claim? Yeah. And he points to a, a, a passage in Hebrews that uh, Dr. White walks through and it's just, well, there's, there's no issue here. And you know, he, he's, no. he's, he, he tries to hang his hat. Like that, that's your, <laughs> that's, that's your biggest thing is, is, is exactly. this, this one change in, in Hebrews. And, and of course I'll link to the, to the debate again that we, we uh, talked about in going over your book as well. And it seems like, well, yeah. e even in his interviews, you know, he'll, he'll on one hand talk in the book of, of the, you know, 400,000 changes and, and, but he won't codify that when he goes to an interview and says, oh, well, what do you think the Bible really said back then? And he was like, well, pretty much just says what it says now. And then uh, uh, kind of towards your yeah. other, uh, other end of the chapter, well, uh, it, Jesus never existed. And he'll even say, well, of course he existed. Where, where do we go to? The text of the New Testament is the best source. <laughs> so, you know, which yeah. is it? <laughs> well, and sometimes there's two audiences. You know, I think he's generally more careful when he knows he's talking to other scholars because uh, he knows enough mm. about, uh, you know, what, what scholarship uh says and so he has to he can't be too simplistic but most of the time he has a much easier day when he talks to you know a popular audience and there he sometimes makes very unguarded uh really irresponsible uh claims that uh you know i think deep down inside he needs to know that he really can't defend those claims or he he would never get away with it in a scholarly debate, you know, but, but then again, uh, the millions of people who have, you know, bought his book, whether or not they, they read them all, uh, the, you know, sometimes they're, they're unsuspecting victims. I mean, you just think about really preying on freshman students at UNC Chapel Hill, you know, who are not religion majors, right. Uh, who, um, I mean, they're an easy target. Uh, it's almost unfair to think about, right? That, that you know, how unequally they're matched with somebody like this who, who knows just exactly which buttons to push to, to get a certain reaction. Um, and um, yeah, it's, it's, it's very, um, I think, dangerous. And, and he's a false teacher. And so I think as a result, you know, I feel like as a father, as a, you know, even apart from scholarship now, you know, a, a responsibility to, to protect unsuspecting, uh, you know, teenagers uh, yeah. who, who enroll in his classes and who have no idea that he has a, a kind of this, this agenda to basically um, uh, challenge their faith to the point of basically uh, destroying their faith. Um, and it's not fair and balanced in our book. We talk about the fact that he doesn't always give you the other side, you know, right. so you just hear, his side of a story. And so part of our, our effort in our book was to give people the other side of a story so they can actually make up their mind. That's not, that's not integrity, right? If you deliberately withhold, uh, 
what you know to be powerful counter arguments to you are you just give people very selectively, you know, what, what supports your case. 